Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to State Leave on Manor, where Roger and I have returned for the Robert E. Howard Show. It's the Robert E. Howard Show once again. And today on the Robert E. Howard Show, Roger and I would just like to express our appreciation for the fact that right now is the greatest time to be a Robert E. Howard fan. It's true. It is. Everything else in the world is terrible, but it's a great time to be a Robert E. Howard fan. And I could say that for sure because I've been a Robert E. Howard fan for a long, long time. Since the 1980s, actually. Actually, before that. Because in the 1970s, when I was a little kid, I was reading Conan. When I got a, whenever I got a chance, I'd read the Conan comic book. I just didn't realize that, you know, this character Conan, published by Marvel Comics was created by a guy named Robert E. Howard back in the 30s. I had no idea. I just loved reading the Conan comic book. But in the 1980s, that's when I really became a Robert E. Howard fan. The first Robert E. Howard book I read was this one. It's Almuric, a science fantasy classic by the creator of Conan. So I read this book. When I was a little, when I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, I read this in the mid 1980s. And it was around this time that I learned about Robert E. Howard and that he created Conan, as it says right there on the book cover. I loved this book. I just thought it was fantastic. And it is a really entertaining book. I'll be right. It's it's pretty awesome. So, yeah, I read this. And after that, I became very interested in reading Conan because this was so fantastic. But at the time, Conan, if you wanted to read Robert E. Howard's Conan stories, the only way you could read them was in this set of books. This is the set of books that was edited by L. Sprague de Camp. But controversially, what L. Sprague de Camp did in this set of books was he would mix in his own pastiche Conan fiction along with the original stories by Robert E. Howard. Not just him, Lim Lynn Carter also did some stories. They worked together, and so it was a big mishmash of original Robert E. Howard Conan stories and stories by these other guys. And that sucked. What we needed was a set of books, a set of Conan books, written by Robert E. Howard. Now, I have nothing against pastiche fiction. I have nothing against Conan pastiche fiction at all. I just don't think it should be mixed in with Robert E. Howard's fiction. I think that's frankly ridiculous. As I've said before, nobody would think of doing that with Sherlock Holmes, one of my other favorite fictional characters. You wouldn't come up with a set of books and just mix your own stuff in with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's original uh, Sherlock Holmes stories. You wouldn't do that. And what if that was the only set available? What was that? The, what if that was the only way you could read Sherlock Holmes? That would suck. And indeed it, indeed it did suck. For those of us who are really interested in the writer, Robert E. Howard. And I was. I, I loved this writer, Robert E. Howard. I just found him fascinating. I loved the way he wrote stories. I thought they were great. And at the time... In around the mid 80s, sword and sorcery was starting to go out of fashion. You know, it, 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 it was huge in the 1970s, in part because of this set of books and these fantastic covers by Frank Frazetta. But in the 1970s, we had a, you know, a sword and sorcery boom fueled by this and Conan the Barbarian comic book and the Savage Sword of Conan comic book. And a whole flood of other sword and sorcery books that came out around that time. And a lot of Robert E. Howard was published uh, in the 70s and into the early 80s. You know, books like these. I remember I, I picked these up. And what, what I would have to do is, back in the day, in the late 80s and 90s, I would have to hunt around the used bookstores and just find whatever Robert E. Howard I could find. And, you know, I found a lot of it because a lot of it was published in the 70s, but 
by the late 80s and into the 1990s, most of those books went out of print and these went out of print. And so the only way you could read Conan was as pastiche fiction. For a long time, there was a series of books from Tor, the Conan series from Tor, which were all pastiche novels. And I remember Robert E. Howard was barely mentioned in those books, if at all. And so it was just all pastiche fiction. If you wanted to get the original stories, they were out of print, which was annoying. Uh, fortunately, Bayon Books did eventually come out with this set of books. This is the Robert E. Howard Library, which was a series of mass market paperbacks where they published a lot of non-Conan fantasy and horror. And these are wonderful. I did a whole video on these. The Robert E. Howard Library from Bayon Books. These kind of kept Robert E. Howard alive during the 1990s for, for those of us who love Robert E. Howard. But it was a tough time. And even into the early 2000s, it could be hard to find uh, some of Robert E. Howard's stuff. But fortunately, and this is what got me thinking about this whole video today, is this book came out. And it came out in 2003. And so when I, when I was looking through my Robert E. Howard books and I was looking at this, I realized, wow, this came out over 20 years ago, which seems insane. It just seems crazy that this has been out for 20 years. And it's still available. You can go on Amazon today and buy it. You know, it's still in print. This edition is in print. This one that has the awesome illustrations in it. Yeah, this book is pretty fantastic. Yeah, look at that. That's great. And so this edition, the first Del Rey Conan book, which is the first of Del Rey's three volumes of Conan, and this was the first of the Del Rey Robert E. Howard books. They published... A lot of his other characters, too, like this one from El Borac. This one, uh, the El Borac stories. El Borac and Other Desert Adventures, which has all of his El Borac stories and other stories like El Borac. They're all in this book, which is fantastic. So the, the Del Rey set of books, still available, is the ultimate set of Robert E. Howard books, I think. It has... His best known characters, uh, a lot of his best stuff is printed in these books. And so all of these are readily available. And not only these are available now, which, you know, like if you're interested in Robert E. Howard, Conan, Cull, uh, Solomon Kane, Bran McMorn, I mean, all, all of those guys available in this set of books. But also now we have uh, books coming out from the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press, which if you're really interested in Robert E. Howard, these are wonderful. Like this is the Collected Letters of Robert E. Howard, Volume 1. This is a three-volume set. So they've got these collected letters that are available for everyone now. You could order this on Amazon uh, and get it easily. And if you're really interested in this author, this is one of the best ways to learn about him through his letters. And we've also got the collected poetry of Robert E. Howard, which is available now. This used to, these used to be really hard to get, his poems. There were a few books here and there, small press mostly, but now we've got a three volume set easily available to us, uh, which, you know, this is just something we didn't used to have. And the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press also publishes fiction, this is their newest book, Swords of the North, which has uh, the complete tales of Cormac MacArt and James Allison and a bunch of other stuff. And the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press, they're going to be pr printing a lot of other books. They're, they're a small press, and some of their hardcover books can be pretty hard to get now. But they're reprinting all of those. And so now, if you're a Robert E. Howard fan... Everything is either available or will be available soon. I think the only things that aren't 
super readily available now are his boxing stories and his westerns, uh, which were the other uh, major areas that he, major things that he wrote, his boxing stories and his westerns. And those will be available fairly soon, probably from the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press. And also, as far as the world of comic books, Titan Books is doing a new series of Conan, which is fantastic. And they talk a lot about Robert E. Howard in their comics uh, because Titan takes Robert E. Howard seriously, which is nice. And we, we're even getting new pastiche novels like Conan City of the Dead by John C. Hawking, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. It's easier to accept pastiche novels now that the original Conan stories are available to us. And that simply didn't used to be the case for a long time. It is true that if you go into most bookstores, you won't find any of this stuff. It's true. You might find one or two of the Del Rey books, maybe. I've noticed that. You go into a bookstore, you might a bookstore, you might find one or two of those lying around. But certainly not the whole set. But that's really not surprising. We live in a world now, I feel like, where the availability of a lot of authors in bookstores is pretty limited, actually. Unless it's a very unless it's like a best-selling author or or something like that, really popular author, you're not gonna find the majority of an author's work in a bookstore. If you're really interested in an author, you probably will go have to go online to buy most of their published work. And that's certainly true of Robert E. Howard, but I feel like that's just a normal part of life now. If you're really interested in a writer, whoever it is, you're probably gonna have to get some of their books online because bookstores, they, they tend to be pretty limited, like I said and a lot of authors, particularly older authors. And so that's okay, you can get it. Now, a lot of this stuff is available as cheap eBooks now too, because Robert E. Howard, a lot of his work is in the public domain. And so you could find like Robert E. Howard books, some Conan sets and things like that for like a dollar, dollar fifty, things like that. I actually don't recommend those. I, I, I would usually say to steer clear of those because the problem with really cheap eBooks is you tend to get what you pay for. And I've noticed, I've, I've gotten a few of those and checked them out. And I've noticed that like they're, they're on some stories, well, first of all, you have the problem of just typos everywhere, which plague publishing nowadays anyway but particularly bad in eBooks. I mean, e typos are everywhere. And in those cheap eBooks, that's what you're gonna get. You have no idea about the textual accuracy of any of the stories. And one thing that the Del Rey Press did and the foundation, the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press does now is they take a lot of care in giving you the most accurate text available of whatever, of whatever they're publishing. So all the stories, you know, they are as close to what Robert E. Howard intended as possible. In an ebook, you have no idea what you're getting or where that where the source of that text came from. And I've read ebooks where you had whole paragraphs missing from certain stories. You just never know because it could be anybody publishing these, and who knows where they got the text. Uh, I would tend to steer clear if you're really interested in Robert E. Howard. Uh, I would spend the money to get the best available. And right now the best texts available are from the Del Rey set of books and the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press. Those are two places you can go where you get where you get those books. You know you're getting the real thing. You're getting the stories as close to uh, what Robert E. Howard intended as possible because they go back to the original typescripts when they're available. And so that's important, I think. And like I said, for years and years, this just wasn't true. This just, this just wasn't possible to get all of that stuff. You were literally hunting the used bookstores for just whatever you could find. And 
there was less of it and less of it out there as time went on. Nowadays, if you're interested in those old paperbacks, you know, paperbacks like Marchers of Valhalla, which is a fantastic collection, you can get them on eBay. They're fairly easy to get there, but much harder out in the wild if you're looking through the bookstores to find stuff like that. But yeah, that was my video for today. Just talking about how much I appreciate the fact that this stuff is actually available now. It's a very good time to be a Robert E. Howard fan. And I will shut up. I will shut up. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.